To show you what the controller API utility can do for your Lotus Notes applications, I've set up a simple test application. Very basic. I haven't made any high-end design or development tweaks here outside of implementing the controller API utility. From here, I'll go and I'll create a document. Now I have a very simple application here, fixed cost, unit variable cost, and amount. Now I'm using this formula to equate the total cost. Now most Lotus Notes client applications would have the total cost as a computed field. That's what I have. However, instead of having this formula in the total cost as the formula, I actually have it computing back to total cost. I'll show you here. Open this up in Designer. We'll open up the document. And total cost here, you'll see, is just total cost. History is just history. Now history is a multi-value field separated by carriage returns uh, for new values, but it's all simple. It's all basic. So how do I compute the, the total cost? How do I compute the history? Well, this field up here, save options, is set to zero. I'm not actually saving the document when I bring this up or creating the document. My process function do it for me. Now this process is defined within a Lotus Script script library called com.dominoguru.control and that is the heart of the control API utility. Now to see this in really a demo of it if you will, I'll go back to that screen. I'll select 10 here just to keep it simple because I'm not that bright. I'll click Save and Close, and you can see here the total cost was in fact added through, and the history updated. If I go in here and I update this value to 20, Save and Close, it's updated, both the cost and the history. This is possible based off of the customizations I've made for the controller API. Now the controller API, simply this, I have two active documents in here. The first for the uh, cost total formula and the second for the history logic. I'll show you how we have that set up. I go in here, the status is active. The selection formula, I'm basically saying if you have a cost, you have a unit variable cost, and you have an amount, give me the formula for the cost total is this formula. And it evaluates that as it computes. It's iterative development to get that value. Same thing with the history logic. If the history is blank, must be a new document, I go in and I set the verb, if you will, to create, otherwise update it, and I update the history by appending the new value to the previous value. Going back in the application, you could see this at play. I go in here, select update, drop this down to five, save and close, it updates, and updates the values. You can see all the ways that you can integrate this application. Let's just say you want to do this via a view action. So I'll go in, update selected document. I'll say that if I want this to be 5, I want this to be 8, and I want this to be 15. I refresh. It's actually updated the value and updated the history. This action, same thing with this agent. Update selected document. So I'll say 15 here, 12, 115. We're going nuts. And it's updated. And again, updated the history. Going back into the design of both of those elements, if I show you the, the actual agent, document update, blow this up so we can see everything, using the control. I go in here and I'm simply prompting and passing the document that I've selected and pass through through the process function. I don't have to maintain multiple instances of the history logic or do I have to maintain the total cost. Where does this come in handy? I'll show you. Let's just say that we didn't want to take into account the unit variable cost. Okay. So instead of having to go back through a view action, instead of having to go back through a, an agent, instead of having to go back into the form and modify all of those values, I simply go into this database and I say, 
okay, I'm going to make a copy of this document. I'm going to set one to inactive so I have a decent backup. I'm going to go back into the active one and I'm going to get rid of this cost. So right now it's just going to be uh, fixed cost times the amount. I'll submit those changes, go back into my test application, update the selected, so let's keep it very simple here, 10, let's say a whole bunch of numbers here for the unit variable cost since that's not going to matter, and I've updated my value which is 10 times the 115 giving me 1150 and again updated the history. Now not only can you maintain application and business logic completely separate of design with this application you can also call agents within that target application. Now within the test application I have a very simple uh, mail send example agent. Let me pull that up and show it to you. All this does sends me an email. Very basic. However, within the control application, I can tell it to enable that. So I've set the type as agent. I've set the name as mail send because that's the alias of the mail send example agent within my test application. I set that as active. I submit my changes. And again, my process has been modified without any design level changes to this application. So I'll go and I'll change that, even though right now we know that there's no calculation. Now if I go into my mail, you'll see this has actually triggered off a new email message. And there you go. So it's kicking off agents, it's modifying and maintaining notes items for the individual document, allowing me to singularly maintain all of my application logic and all of my business logic outside of the design of the application and all within the controller API utility.